All right, guys, welcome back in to another episode of To The Show We Go Baseball Podcast. Um, today's episode, we have a Red Sox minor league pitcher, Austin Ehrlicher, joining us today. Um, he actually kind of had like a unique story because he was part of the 2022 draft class, but was uh, kind of like a interesting uh, draft and follow type example. Um, so I, I'm sure we'll get into that as well because I, I do have a question later on on uh, kind of the the process through that whole journey. But Austin, we appreciate uh, you hopping on with us today. And uh, I'm going to start us off with a little layup here. Um, I know obviously you're back in California right now. Uh, yep. You're kind of working out, you're training. Um, how has uh, your official off season been since it started? It's been good. I think it's definitely been a necessary time for me to kind of reset and get back and uh, just get ready to go next year. I've been a uh, been hurt for too long so this is I'll, I'll be good to go next year so it's been it's been going good now was was that layup was that line a reference to austin's uh basketball background possibly i figured <laughs> yeah you were like a you were I, i'm just reading through some of your career notes you were both a basketball and baseball player um and you were going to give up baseball to focus on basketball like um what what happened what made you change your mind yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy story. So um, started when COVID happened, my junior year of high school. Um, up until that point, I'd been like a, I'd been a good baseball player, but I was like 82, 83 on the mound junior year. I was a good hitter, but I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't starting on varsity in high school as a, as a junior. I was barely on the team as a sophomore. So uh, COVID happened and then they kind of canceled everything. And then a couple months later, I found out that when we go back my senior spring, the baseball and basketball season, we're going to be in the same at the same time. So at that time, I was like, all right, I'm just going to text everyone. I'm hanging, hanging them up and focusing on basketball. And that's, that's what I did. And uh, focused on basketball, kind of transformed my body. A lot of plyometrics started jumping higher, got way more explosive. Um, and my senior senior year, my high school coach called me up and was like, hey, I heard you're, you're not playing this year. He was like, you know, I really think you should come out. Um, I was like, all right. I mean, told him my situation would be playing basketball and baseball at the same time. And he was like, fine, you don't have to be at all the practices. Just I think you should come out. And uh, so I, I came out and ended up playing basketball and baseball the same, at the same time in high school. I mean, I would go, there was one game where I, I pitched, I hit, and then I went over for the fourth quarter of my high school basketball game. So that was, that would be my crazy story from that time. But, uh, the training that I did for basketball ended up translating to baseball because my first game back, um, through like five innings, one hit, there was a bunch of strikeouts and the guy came back to me and was like, yeah, you know, you hit 91, right? I was like, no, never, never thrown that hard before. <laughs> He was like, no, you hit it multiple times. I was like, oh. So then I was like, I, did, I just had a lot of fun playing. I think that was what what changed. I was having so much fun hitting, pitching, going to basketball. Um, that just really showed up on the field. And then got the call from San Diego Junior College. And was like, I think we, wanna, we want you to come out. And ended up playing basketball and, and baseball in college, too. So that was, that was kind of how that went. Yeah, that's so much though. Two sports, like one sport is is, is so no, much. Was, it's so time consuming. Did you have time for anything outside of basketball and baseball while you were while you were playing? No, college was crazier. I mean, because baseball is you know fall too, so I would be going middle of practice, going over to basketball practice, and my college practices were no joke. They're not they're not like high school. So it's I'm exhausted every day from, I mean, literally seven thirty to ten at night. Some days I'm I'm going. So that was by far the hardest thing I've ever, I've ever had to do, but it was, it was good. I had a lot of fun doing it. So now you grew up, um, you grew up in Santa Rosa, right? Yeah. So are you a, like a Warriors fan or what was, what were yeah. your teams growing up? Huge, huge Warriors fan for sure. Definitely a Giants fan as well, but, uh, yeah, grew up watching those, those two teams and still definitely a big fan of the Warriors. Was after you uh, kind of got out to uh, Fort Myers, like after um, signing with the Red Sox, was that one of your first times you'd ever been to the East Coast? 
No, that was the first time I've been to Florida. I went to Boston and New York a few times when I was like pretty young, like 11, 12. I think my when I was eight, in eighth grade, I went for a trip to Boston and New York. Um, I actually got to tour Fenway. Um, but yeah, first time I went to Fort Myers was, that was the first time I've been to Florida. So a lot different than in California for sure. Yeah, your uh, draft story was pretty, pretty interesting just as far as the Red Sox took you in the 18th round and they, but it was kind of like you were, you didn't immediately report to the team. It was like a draft and follow situation. Yep. How, how did they explain that to you? Like, what was the conversation like after you signed? Um, well, I didn't, uh, after the second day I was kind of thought, I mean, I kind of told them that I was going to go back and, you know, play it, play the JC and then was on my phone the, the third day and got some Twitter notifications that I was, that I got picked <laughs> and uh, called me after and was like, Hey, we, we picked you. And I was like, uh, all right. And then they kind of explained the draft and follow thing. And, um, there wasn't, I mean, wasn't too much conversation. It was kind of a straightforward process. It's not as straightforward to, to, for me to explain to people, but, um, yeah, I'm, you know, interesting, but I'm glad it worked out that way. Cause in the end it was, yeah, you know, I was able to sign early once I was hurt. So ended up being a good thing. Now you, you kind of brought it up at the beginning of the show and, you know, you're, you're kind of saying, obviously like you, you haven't pitched as much as you would have liked the last two years, obviously with some injuries that came up. Um, and I think a big part of it too, with, uh, I know we, we had, uh, Taylor Broadway on this show a few months back, just kind of checking in with him during his rehab, see how he's doing. And I think people uh, underestimate the mental side of things with, uh, the toll it can take on a guy that can't do his job because he physically can't do it. Um, how has that been for you? Uh, and what kind of things have you, um, I guess what kind of things have you put in place to to help you over that mental battle of like, hey, I really want to be out there, I really want to be slinging it right now, but I just can't. Yeah, it was it was brutal. There's no other way to put it. Um, I had never been hurt before before this. I mean, some ankle sprains and you know my arm hurts, but still out there pitching. So it was it was really hard, and it's it wasn't a straightforward. Your elbow's injured. We need to heal it and get back it kind of eventually turned into a few different things. So, um, you know, just relying on the training staff and the people people around me, um, you know, like Broadway, there's other other rehab guys there. So I got to know a lot of them, um, you know, doing things on my own to keep myself busy, calling my family and girlfriend, all that. So it's uh, realized how much you miss it when you're, you're not able to play. And that's why I enjoyed it so much when I was in, in Salem, just being able to play and playing real games. So yeah, it, it takes a toll on you mentally for sure. And it's, it's, uh, it's pretty tough, but makes you miss it even more and cherish it when you're, when you're out there playing. So yeah, go, going back a little bit, um, what, what's your family like? Do you have a, do you have a big family? Are they sports people? Uh, yeah, I got a big family and they're all, they're all here. I got a lot of cousins, grandparents. And so they were all growing up, going to my games, taking me that to my games um same me and my dad are probably the biggest biggest sports fans but um they all they all enjoy sports watch space watch baseball warriors games all that so what do they think of you as a professional athlete because i i feel like there's i i know with like with my family at least it's like oh great all the kids play all the kids play sports growing up but none of them are going to make this their living none of them are going to do this professionally and yeah. then you're you know, you're getting drafted. You're potentially a two sport college player. Like that's, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, what, what do they think of, of you pursuing this? Um, I mean, they, they love it. Obviously they see how much I enjoy, enjoy the game and being around the game, being around the guys. Um, but it all, it, it happened fast. I mean, it went from like when I quit baseball, it was like, you know, I'm going to the JC play basketball, try to go, Play Division One basketball after that, and you know it's still pretty pretty far away. But um, once I got to the JC, it all happened really fast. All the draft stuff. So, um, like my dad definitely was overwhelmed when it was all happening too, and trying to help me. But um, obviously, they love it, and want the best for me. So they're they're excited and always wanting to uh, watch me play. 
Now, was your dad an athlete also? He was a basketball player at the same junior college. Gotcha, gotcha. What does he do now? Uh, he runs a mortgage company. Wait, I was I was going to follow up on that, Ed, because speaking of athletes here, um, I, I know that there was some leagues going on with the uh, the injured boys down in uh, the Ford. <laughs> yeah. Um, were you successful at the uh, opposite handed bowling or mini golf or because Zach Bryant kind of uh, tooted his own horn that he was uh, the guy in all of those. So I'm curious what your uh, thoughts were on it. Um, I caught the end of the mini golf. Um it was the championship, so I wasn't, I wasn't really in it. I had, I had some good rounds, but uh, bowling, man, left-handed bowling is not my thing. I, I survived. I had a few good rounds, but it was not my thing. But uh, it is Michael Fulmer's thing for sure. He came out there first time left-handed bowling two hundreds. Oh, so I said that, Yeah, I was. I did it with them for a few weeks, and then they they all got really into it, um, and they were starting to get their own balls uh, going twice a week um i think fulmer and broadway did some tournaments uh so they were they were into it they were a lot better than me but it, that's, it was, a pretty, that's a pretty big name there fulmer what was it like uh getting to because he was what was it the 2014 rookie of the year this is a guy that's you know pitched at the highest level and now he's kind of in the same spot as you just like uh repairing what was what was it like getting to, I guess, be um, like a colleague with, with with somebody that's, you know, that has made it to where you at some point would like to be? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I I think I tell a lot of people that if you're in a weight room, you can you can tell the difference between a big leader and, and not. And that's the case with him, just the way he talks, works, especially when he's playing catch. It's just, you know, it's, it's just a different vibe that you get from him that um is good to be around because that's how you want to be so um yeah getting to know him a little bit was was great and just being around him and seeing him every day seeing him start to throw it was it was good to see because yeah he's been a big leader for a long time so to be around that's pretty cool yeah it was it was always cool to hear the stories uh a couple years back when when zach kelly was rehabbing through um his injuries and you know, I, I was hearing all the minor league guys kind of say how much that the time with him meant is with him just being a wealth of knowledge for them and just being like, OK, like here's, you know, if you're struggling with something or if you just want to run something by me, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, and I know with that group down there with Fulmer, like you just said, and Chris Murphy and a few other guys that have gotten to the to the big leagues, like um, was there ever any times where they kind of like maybe gave you guys any advice or anything to maybe get through some of the hurdles? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I think it was more, like I said, just watching how they did it, kind of leading by example. Um, you know, you kind of hear a few things here and there. Um, but I think, again, just like watching how they go about it and, you know, they're, they're down there for longer than, a little bit longer than I was, so um, to see them go go about it the way they the way they did, it was that spoke more to me than you know the things that they they necessarily told me. But yeah, both getting to talk to them and, and watching them go through it was was cool. So you skip with the FCL, like they didn't really have you throw in there at all. But then you get oh. called up to Salem, and it was a small sample size, but you, you struck out a lot of guys. You struck out, I, I'm just looking at this. Yeah, it was 10 guys in six innings. You got into two games. What was the, because I'm sure you had been thinking about this for a long time. You were drafted to 2022. This happens 2024, so like two years later. Um, how did the actual experience of pitching professionally compare to your expectations of it? Like going through the whole rehab process? Yeah. Um I don't know. I, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, you obviously hear the stories of you know playing in the minor leagues, and um, I think the guys who love the game that much, you know, that part doesn't really matter. Matter. They're just out there playing. Um, so I mean, it was it was awesome. Like I said, just being out there. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I'd ever played in front of more than a couple hundred people at that point. I mean, I'd playing in junior college and played for you know, a good summer league team that had some had some people come out, but. Uh, to be in a you know real stadium with people watching it was it just made it ten times better and you know especially being around the teammates that I was around it was it was a good experience. 
Now, what were your uh, what were your initial thoughts on Salem? I'm I'm curious because I I know you're a California guy, so yeah. uh, getting thrown out to Salem, Virginia, is a little bit of a probably a culture shock. Uh, it's a little different way of life out there. So, what were your thoughts? Yeah, um, I mean, I had heard a lot about Salem, so I mean, I wasn't I wasn't expecting anything less than what I got. Um, but I mean, it it's not as bad as people people might think. I mean, it's we got. We got lucky. We got nice apartments, um, and you're at the field all day, um, just there to play baseball. So, city, good city or not, you know, it doesn't matter too much to me. It's just uh, we're at the field all day, so that's what we focus on. But definitely different than California, I'll tell you that. And I will tell you this though, um, High A, where Greenville is, fantastic city and ballpark. So yeah, I've heard. Uh, I've heard nothing but every player that's gone through there that we've talked to loves Greenville and yep. um, obviously Portland and Worcester are very close to Boston. So the fans are, uh, they draw like crazy. So yeah. um, I, Oh, go ahead, Ed. I was, so as, as a pitcher, Salem is a pretty big stadium. You don't see a lot of people hitting home runs there. Yeah. Does that make a difference for you? Like, would you rather pitch in a stadium like that, or would you rather pitch somewhere like Greenville, where park might not be as big and spacious, but it's a nicer city? Um, I think not giving up any homers is a little bit nicer. <laughs> so, yeah, you always have that in your back pocket is good. Um, yeah, it's, it is definitely a pitcher's park, so um, gives you a little bit more confidence, but it's not something you can really think about because you go you go to a different city the next week, and it's it's not a pitcher's park, so you pitch the same way. Um, every time but it is it is nice having those big big walls out there yeah now you, because you were I, i'm curious um we've heard a lot in the last couple seasons just about driveline and like the pitching science that's entered the red sox organization but since you're rehabbing an injury and really just trying to get back there on the field is that something that you're talking about like developing another pitch or adding velocity or anything like that or is it more just let's get you on the field first and then figure it out from there I need to get on the field first, and then, and then yeah. Okay, that's what I that's what I thought. I was no, just curious. It, it, is, it is definitely it's definitely a conversation though, because I mean, um, been injured for a while, so there are things mechanically and pitch wise that are going to have to you know, have to make some adjustments. So it's definitely something that they're get at and take a lot of time doing. So uh, when I get back there, it'll definitely be a topic of conversation and. Um, it definitely was when I got to spring training and kind of got ramped up working on the sweeper change up fastball. I, I mean, I had never had a track man. I mean, I've really had a velocity when I'm throwing at the JC. So it's having all that. It's, I kind of let them handle it to be honest. So I don't, I, I don't understand a lot of it, but uh, <laughs> they, do, they do a good job of like telling us, especially the pitching side of it, like what to throw in games. Um, it's a lot of data, but they make it, simple and i i just love that they want us to throw your best stuff in the zone so that's that's what i take out of it what's your best stuff um for me this year is definitely my slider um but they just preach throw it in the zone make them make them do the work and uh it definitely works like people get uh too fixed on trying to be too perfect and uh throw it down the middle you're not gonna hit it every time so i think letting your stuff work and more trust you have in yourself, the, the the better it is. So for them to tell us that too, have more trust in ourselves, and it definitely helps. Is is the sweeper a, a newer pitch for you? Like, is that something that once you kind of turned pro um, that you've started to develop, or are there any pitches like that for you that you've added since you have turned pro? Yeah, uh, sweeper was new. Um, in college, I was more curveball, changeup, fastball. Um, I think at the end of my sophomore year at junior college, my I, I added a slider and then it kind of turned into a sweeper, which wasn't a great thing because that's not what I wanted, but it kind of morphed into being a, a really good pitch for me. Um, so right now it's just fastball changeup sweeper and I'm sure we'll add some things, but honing in on those three pitches I think would be good for me, but it is, it is a new pitch and I, I really like it, so. I did have a question for going into this off season. Obviously you were, um, you know, going through a little bit of a rehab process this year. Um, 
I'm not sure, and you don't have to answer the question, but um, going into spring training and all that, I'm sure you're heading back to the four probably January-ish, if I had to guess. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Um, I did last year. I know they had like four or five dates. It, it should be around there, though, I think is what they, it's what they said. Are you uh, are you like ramping back up yet to where you're going to be going through like a like a healthy spring training? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll be ready. Okay, and what does that uh, is this? Would this be your first one that you would be like considered fully healthy in your pro career? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was tough because I I don't think the people in the Red Sox organization have seen me fully healthy in pro ball. Um, even though I was I was fishing good and you know, I was feeling good enough to throw and I was fishing well, but I've I've not been healthy and I think it'll be pretty obvious when I am healthy. So I'm I'm excited for it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this will be the first one where I'm fully healthy and I can confidently say that. Yeah. Apologies for uh, uh, visiting because I'm sh- this because I'm sure it was not the not 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 your favorite thing to talk about. But what what happened with the injury? Like, was it something that happened in one moment, or was it a gradual? Oh well, wow, this is hurting, and I should probably get this checked out. Like what? Yeah, uh, yeah like how did that happen? Um, I mean, I could kind of feel. I think once we got the elbow fine, that was. It was fine, but then it kind of turned into a little bit of a shoulder thing, and I could feel the strength go away a little bit and sail in my second start. Then uh, we were warming up uh, dynamic the next week after I fished in Delmarva or at Delmarva and uh, just messed around my shoulder and kind of caught a little bit and was having trouble moving it the next few days. Um, So it ended up being kind of shouldered. Uh, a little bit of nerve stuff. So I think, unfortunately, it was multiple things and part of the equation with healing that is time. So um, obviously not, not what I wanted, but I um, think I did a good job trying to get back. And now that I have the time to really hone in on what I need to work on in the off season, I'll be, I'll be good to go. But yeah, it turned into a shoulder, then a little bit of nerves um, kind of around it and then feeling better now. But that's that's what happened. So I see in your last season at uh, Santa Rosa that you had started some games and you also came out of it out of the bullpen in a few. Um, And obviously the two games you appeared in were out of the bullpen for Salem this past year, but where do you feel more comfortable? Like what, um, where do you view yourself kind of being the strongest, I guess? Is it a little bit of both or like, are you comfortable with both? Um. Yeah, I th- I'm, I think I'm more comfortable starting. I, I like the routine of it, but um, the plan the plan was to kind of go back and forth between um, starting and, and not starting in Salem. I'm going to go like three and three with Cohen, so I, I didn't even end up getting the chance to start. Um, but I think actually learning how to prepare for both is really good for me because, you know, I'm not going to be able to control where I'm at all the time. So learning my routine for, for both starting and coming out of the bullpen and maybe even closing is, is good for me. So definitely pitch the most starting, but I think learning some new stuff and yeah, I love the start, but wherever, wherever they put me in, I'll be, I'll be prepared. All right, Ed, I have a uh, couple quick fire questions, but um, if you got some more stuff, this is your time. I mean, I got some quick fire questions too. We can just take our, t- take turns. You go one, I go one. I like it. One, I go one. I actually like that a lot. Um, yeah, let's do that. All right. So Austin, uh, we want to know you a little bit off the, you know, off the field, maybe just like what you like to do in your free time. So Ed, I'm sorry if I take yours and vice versa, we'll, yeah, that's we'll, fine. Uh, we'll adapt on the fly. Um, Austin, what, yeah. what do you like to do when you have a day off and you just, you have a bunch of free time? What, what are you doing with that free time? Um, if I can definitely like golfing, definitely like being out there. Um, I'll definitely shoot around in the backyard a little bit. Not playing, but I'm just shooting around. I like to, you know, move athletically still, but golfing and uh, shooting around, being active. And I just, uh, I got some like golf simulator in the garage now, but I can't Ooh. can't swing lefty, so I'm hitting it righty now. So I'm I'm golfing both ways. So that's wow. that, that's what I've been doing in my free time. 
what are you like what are you what are you shooting opposite handed i'm i haven't i haven't taken it to the course yet I, I okay on the simulator on the on the practice range but it's it's pretty good it's, it's getting there impressive yeah it's it's getting there all right what what what's i i don't know much about golf unfortunately but um do you do you, do, you, do you like movies at all austin I do. I think I'm more of a show guy, to be honest. Okay. What 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 shows are you watching right now, if anything, and what is your all time favorite? All time favorite. I always like. I, I don't know if I have one all time favorite specifically. I always like the documentaries on athletes. I love the Conor McGregor show. I just watched Starting Five. Um, the one on the wide receivers, QBs, um, things like that. Or, pretty much what i'm watching i will say um we asked this question to a lot of people last year like the show like what show are they watching i feel yeah. like 80 percent of the guys said suits suits um, yeah <laughs> I, I feel like it's a big minor league baseball player show yeah i i haven't watched it i, I know a lot of people watch it. I, think, I think my dad is watching it actually but I, I haven't gotten into it yeah i don't think i ever did either um all right, this will. I know you said you're more of a TV show guy, but there's got to be one movie that you're like, you know what? If I'm trying to like have a good day or a good night, and I just got time, I don't want to watch a TV show. What movie are you putting on? Oh, um, I can't even think of the last time I watched a movie. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, I know. I'm I'm watching sports and, and shows. Um, I'm trying to think of the last movie I watched. I honestly don't know. I know growing up it was a lot of the baseball baseball movies. Um Thunderstruck the basketball movie was a huge one as a kid. I don't know if you know that one. Um that was probably oh, my favorite. it was the one with like Kevin Durant and uh Oh, I remember when that came out. Yeah. That that was probably my favorite movie as a kid, but I, I honestly don't I don't watch movies. But as a kid that was that was probably my favorite one. So so keeping this on basketball, baseball. Growing up, who was your favorite player each sport? Um, definitely Steph, basketball. Um, I was a big Kobe fan uh, when I was really young. And then started to become more of a Warriors fan. So big, big Steph fan. Um, baseball, a lot of Tim Lincecum. Oh, yeah. Watch. Um, DeGrom was really fun to watch. Still is fun to watch. Um, those are probably my two, two guys. How old were you during the um, – because because the Giants had that that period where it was like every other year they were winning the World Series. Did you get yeah. to – did you get to experience any of those? I was there. Um, I can't remember if I went to one or two of them. I think I I think I went to two of them. One of them like we the, got – Like the games, the parades, like yeah. – uh, Oh. Two games, yeah. Uh, I think it was – I think it was 2014 and, and maybe one of the other years. But we sat uh, – a. Sat like on the top thing of the right field pole. That was that was pretty cool to be at. Um, yeah, I think that was the only one I went to. But yeah, that was it was pretty cool. It was a good good time to be a Giants fan. Yeah, seriously. Between that and the Warriors, like you had you had some, a, a really I nice like, run there. I was going to Warriors games too. We we got spoiled. I'm about to set you up for failure with this question. This follow up question to that. Um, you grew up a Giants fan but you're a member of the of the Red Sox organization. So who are you rooting for in the World Series? Oh, the Red Sox. <laughs> it's not the current World Series, though. The, the Yankees or Dodgers. Oh, I thought I you meant like, – Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, um, I just want a good game. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, right? Grow up a Giants fan. They play together. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for a good game. Probably one of the craziest I've ever seen, though, with the walk off. So that was that was crazy. Yeah, I still that the, the Freeman walk off there was still uh, one of the. I was, and I, I saw somewhere that it happened. It wasn't like the same to like the day, but it was the same time. It was like eight thirty seven when Kirk Gibson hit the home run, and it was eight thirty seven when Freddie Freeman hit it. Yeah, it was. That was crazy. All right, I got a. This is a completely random question, but um, 
I actually uh, was asked this the other day, and I feel like I got to start asking it on my <laughs> on these podcast interviews because it put my mind in an absolute pretzel. Um, so I got to ask the question that you got three fingers, three of your fingers on your hand can dispense a sauce for the rest of your life, but you can only have those three sauces for the rest of your life. What are they going to be? Sauce. Is this a Zaxby's question? Like, what, no. what, what? Where did you get this from? <laughs> <laughs> It's a valid question. I'm going, I'm going uh, cane sauce for sure. Uh, a good buffalo sauce and a good ketchup. Ooh, okay. So hear me out, though. So you're never going to have barbecue sauce ever again in your life. I'm not like the biggest. Uh, I mean, I am. But like, yeah, that's tough. That is I mean, you mix ranch. the buffalo sauce with the ketchup. That's yeah. kind of a little bit like you could. There's more variety there. Like barbecue sauce is just fancy ketchup. I, what, about, what about the ranch? I'm not a huge ranch guy, to be honest. I, I like Fair. ranch. No, I like ranch. Like I'll put that on my wings, but I'm not. I'm not dipping everything in ranch. Okay. There's times. There's times I do. It's a great question. Like nice. that's, a, that's a. I feel like there's like there, there, like if you there's. There's some kind of a Rorschach test to someone's personality based on what they answer that. I have no idea what it is, but uh, that's that's good. That's a good one. I I, I don't I don't have any that are that are that exoterra. That's yeah. Anyway, uh. <laughs> uh, I have a couple more before we let you slide out of here. Obviously, um, you know, Ed, I, I was probably gonna. What are your thoughts on the uh, on the rivalry? Obviously, you're a California guy. And I feel like this came up so much because you obviously know there's a lot of Texas guys in the Red Sox system, a lot of California guys. You mentioned CT uh, before we came on the air. Um, is it, is the rivalry, the in and out and like Whataburger thing, like a real thing? Like, do people care about that still? I don't think so. And I've never been to Whataburger. I'm not, I'm not lie. Okay. So I, I can't even compare. Um, and I like in and out, but it's not like, it's not my go-to for sure. I know, I know people who have never had it. Like, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's not my go-to. And I had no, I've never been to Whataburger, so. Okay. Uh, I just tried it for the first time uh, a couple weeks ago, so I just had to ask. Um, what are you? Uh, what's your uh, like pregame snack? Like, what are you eating like before you go out and pitch? Um. Usually something light. Like I'll have a have a good meal, whatever they give us. Um, so I'm a little bit heavier earlier in the day. Um, I don't like being on a on a full stomach though. So something electrolytes, small stack, beef stick, um, some of the gum, gummy gummy things they got for us. But usually light right before the game and something bigger before uh, a couple hours before. Okay. Uh, final question for you: uh, What are your thoughts on a uh, fast food chain called Zaxby's? Mm. Um, first time I went there was when I was, it was like a couple of days after I got four miles first time and it was good. It was, I was a little disappointed. It was, I mean, I was, I was comparing it to Canes. Uh, I like Canes a lot. Um, I'd say for me, it would, it would be a little bit below Canes. Is Canes your number one? Cause I'm, uh, this, so we did this last season where, um, Parker would ask, what's your favorite? fried chicken place and inevitably he would be disappointed because only like three people answered zaxby's um yeah i'm tracking it this year i want to get actual numbers for yeah. what people say so would you say canes is uh is your answer for that i i think so i can tell you're a big zaxby's guy so me i've never no. been to zaxby's i've just no, heard he's talking about, about it. it yeah well, I it, he kind of gave it away because he said one of the sauces in his fingers would be cane yeah. sauce, which I love cane sauce, but Zach sauce is just a little better. But I agree. I do like their, I do like their sauce actually. That is good. All right, fair. All right. Well, Ed, I was thinking about retiring that question because I thought you were getting sick of it. But if you're trying, I will it never year, I guess get I sick of it. Mostly it. because I just enjoy seeing your your reaction to them not saying Zach's face. It's different every time, and I, I and then, and then like when someone like Blaze Jordan is like, "Oh no, it's Zach's face. Like it's it's just unbridled joy. It's it's a delight. So I, I can't retire that one. Can't retire All right, that fair. one. I got uh Alex Bouchard, big Zaxby's guy. I know he's down in the in the hurt group. He actually texted me that he got zaxby's on saturday so i'm like hell yeah like that's my guy i'm counting um, him as part of this season so it's zaxby's one canes one right now 
Dude, Shea um, Sprague you, you, was Chick Fil A. What was that? Shea Sprague was Chick Fil A. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm adding. Can't that trust that guy. Too. No, this is like this dude. dude I, I, I'm going to be obsessive with this. There's going to be some weird statistical analysis at the end of the year. It's going to be great. All right, fair. Well, uh, Ed, uh, Austin, we uh, we appreciate uh, the time you coming on, and uh, obviously looking forward to seeing you in spring training. You know, coming back healthy, we're definitely looking forward to it. But thank you for hopping on. Of course, thanks for having me.